All right, we should be back. Maybe. Hopefully. All right, there we go. All right, um, let's just change this. All right, change the category. All right, doing daily run. Uh, I don't remember who did. Actually, is it Dina? It is, okay. All right, um, all right, where am I at the player thing? So part of these won. Then Gino launched an OnlyFans. Why? Why? Why did he launch an OnlyFans? Um, all right, Poverty's one. Amanda V two. But uh, I, don't know. I assume he'll make a lot of money, right? So good on him. Uh, Natalie Bolton. Hmm. Natalie Bolton. I think is. Actually, I don't know. Where's Natalie Bolton on this? So like, I think Natalie Bolton's better than Dara. I don't know if she's better than Amy. So I think that might be all that she goes. Uh, Alexis Jones? I actually don't know. Is Alexis Jones better than Natalie? I think it's kind of a tough one. I think Alexis beats Natalie at the end. Like, obviously Natalie makes it further, but like I think Alexis is more of a threat in the game. Um... Yeah, again, I agree that, like, yeah, it can lay the groundwork for you surviving the first few rounds, but, like, who cares? That's not the end. That's not the win. Uh, like, I think it makes the path to the end harder. Like, I think if you're pre-gaming, I think it opens up the situation for you to burn more relationships, which makes the end game a lot harder. This is bullshit. I'm not doing this. You know, that's probably the best path. Um... Okay, this is... Huh. This would be easy. Fuck, what is this one? There's two captures there. Three, so it's not capture, it's not holdout. One, two, three, four, five, six. So it's probably hunted or assault on humans. Which if it's hunted, then that's bad. Alright, anyway. Um, how does it make the path to the end harder? It's like, one, you're going to have to burn these relationships and still try to maintain their jury votes. Two, it's also you facing off against much more difficult competition than you would on a newbie season. Um, where again, unless it's like, essentially like, nah, like Tarzan, <laughs> people like that. Uh, and which even then, I mean, like, they're probably still more competent players than, uh, some of the people that make it in on other newbie seasons. Alright. Wait, what was the thing? I already forgot. What's the gambit? Okay, it was melee. Where to play Alexis? I haven't yet. <laughs> uh... Oh, what the fuck? Okay, that scared me. Where are they? Can they, like, actually come towards me? Oh, what the fuck? Okay. Alright, fine. Um, I'm saying that benefit of a returning season that can make it easier than a new season. But, like, the same thing if you said the opposite. 
Which is, I mean, yeah, like, the entire thing is that, like, all this entire conversation is so pointless. It doesn't matter. Um... Yeah, Alexis, I think it's probably, I probably would say Alexis is better than Natalie. I don't know. I think it's tough because, like, obviously Alexis was involved in the, the Eric move. Um, but it's, like, also, like, I, I yeah, I don't think Natalie could win. Where it's, like, Alexis, I think, beats Natalie. And Natalie was trying to get to the end of Alexis. Um... Why would I go on a newbie season? I mean, would I rather go on a newbie season or returning season? I would rather go on a newbie season, personally. Then again, it matters, like, the context of the returning season, I guess. It depends on, like, who the returnee is. Like, if I'm, like... I mean, yeah, it depends on, like, if I'm, like, Carson... Then like I would much rather be on a on a newbie season than like a returnee season. Um, if I'm like, I don't know, like fucking Brad, I'd rather be on a returnee season than a newbie season. <laughs> um, like I think it depends on like what your threat level is and like, how, like how, like how you're going to play your game and how that game would be known on a returning season. Or like, again, Jesse's someone that like is so fucked on a returning season. Uh, like there's no way Jesse's able to do anything. Um, uh, what do I want here? I have no ammo, right? Okay. Well, at least I got ammo. Uh, I go into a newbie season of Survivor with no people, you know, prior going to three of your friends. I mean, it's like, like, it's, it's difficult because it's like with three of your friends, it's like you're, yeah, you're going with people that you know, but again, it's also people that you can't take to the end. Um... But also, I guess it's like, like more like the fucking end of mattering, right? More like they're going to be taken out due to other circumstances along the way. Where if this was Big Brother, I think that would be a different situation. Um, where like survivors situation where like they could, they're probably just going to be on a different tribe and it won't end up mattering. Um, like, can you take them to the end? It depends on who they are. And like, it matters if like what game they've played, like what, like I think there's a lot of factors involved. Like, if I'm going... Like, let's say if I'm going into a returning season, my friends are Marianne, Jam Jam, and Carson. I'm not going to fucking take Marianne, Jam Jam, and Carson to the end. Um, like, they'll all just demolish me in a jury vote. Um, well, also, if you are the Marianne, Carson, or Jam Jam, how much can you really trust your friend? Because they're, you're going to know that they are... They know that they can't take you to the end. To where, again, like, there's a lot of, like, preconceived notions on a returnee season. To where, like, you can't even, like, really play your game genuinely. To where, really, like, I, I think, like... Like, there is an argument that, like, returnee seasons, like, aren't real survivor seasons. <laughs> like, it, it does... Like, it is a, like, really different game. Because there's just, like, so much extra, like, um, context involved. Dude, this is so shit. It's like, this one's impossible, but this is by far the best path. That's probably not worth it. Um. But again, that's not how that fucking works. No one gives a shit about pregame. If you expose your pregame, it's like, who fucking cares? <laughs> like, no one gives a shit. Especially if you're at Final Tribal. It's like, who fucking gives a shit about your pregame at Final Tribal? 
Uh, BB can player ranking or power ranking. Power ranking, it's probably Bailey one right now. Then maybe Anthony two, V three. But I think that's the issue is that you're thinking about this like it's an org when it's not an org. Again, this isn't a situation where you're playing with no stakes to it. Like you're all playing for a million dollars. You're not all playing for bragging rights of who won this fucking random org online. Um... Again, the, the reality is, again, like, it's just all contextual. Like, there is no definitive that this is easier because of this, this is harder because of this. Like, it's all based around, like, what situation you're given. That was me being dumb. Alright. I did not watch today's episode. But I know what happened. But... I'm just like a bit confused on like... Why Anthony is doing this. Which is like... I get that he's like... Thinks he's super close to Bailey. But it's like... Does he think he can beat Bailey? I guess he probably does, right? Which, like, is an issue, because I don't think he can. Um... So, like, I don't know if, like, his entire end game here is based around, like, him thinking he can beat everybody. Which, even then, like, I mean, that actually makes this worse, actually, now I think about it. Because, like, he then at that point, his goal should be just getting to the end, right? Which, like, this is, like, a path that's, like, harder for him to get to the end. By taking out me here. Fuck. Again, the move should be take out Bailey. Yeah, I think Todd definitely takes Bailey to the end. He's, I think if V goes here, I think Bailey takes Todd or Lexus, I mean, either one. I, I think definitely doesn't take Anthony. I think uh, Lexus takes probably Bailey at that point because I think she's pro women and wanting a woman final two, all women final two. I think Todd takes Bailey. So again, at that point, it's like I think Anthony's pretty screwed unless he wins final four veto. Um, what is this? Uh, champs versus pros. In a survivor season, I'd probably pick one of the champs. Like in this specific group, I might go like Kim. I think Kim's in a pretty decent spot within that group. I don't think anyone's coming for her. 
All right, that was kind of a bad score, but multiplier was bad. Um, is Bailey, is Bailey playing well or is it just luck? I think it's both. I think, again, like, I think the thing about Bailey's game is that she's playing well considering what she thinks is happening. But what she thinks is happening isn't what was happening. But, like, because she is so resolute in that being what's happening, she's convinced other people, like, she's convinced V to think that that's what's happening. Um, like, it's a very strange situation. Because, like, she is someone that is, like, so, like, she was unaware of, like, how the game was actually being played early on. Like, she did not realize, like, hot chocolate was a thing. She didn't realize that, again, the women were not, like, fully loyal to her. But because of that, like, she would be playing the game as if the women's alliance was a real thing. And because she's, like, using that as her way to, like, campaign and, like, uh, try to get, like, Spicy V to do things, like, she's able to convince Spicy V of her point of view when, like, that isn't the point of view that, like, Spicy V should be having. But she's able to convince Spicy V of, like, going through these things that, again, is better for the women's alliance, but it's not actually better for, like, Hot Chocolate and, and them. Like, keeping Todd in the game makes no fucking sense for Spicy V and co. at this point. Yet, like, for the women as a whole, if they're thinking that there's this men group that's against them, Todd is the person, is, like, the guy that's with them. So, like, it makes sense. But, like, that's not actually how the game is being played. But, like, because Bailey is so convinced that that is how the game is being played, she's able to campaign that and, like, actually make it seem like it's, like, that's something that Victoria should do when it's not. So, it's, like, it's it's a very, like, weird situation. Like, it's, like, she is effective in, like, getting her way, especially towards the later portions of the game. But, like, it's partially due to the fact that she is, like, so unaware of her own game that she's able to even get that through. Um... All right, what, what am I doing here? What's the, uh, it's, no, this is hunted, this is hunted. Okay, cool, cool, cool. That's what I wanted. Oh, uh, Bailey be definitely three. Um, I think there's a chance Bailey's two, but yeah. Uh, I mean, like, there's technically a chance that Bailey's one. Um, but yeah, I mean, like, again, Bailey goes on to win this, like if Vic, if V goes out final five and Bailey goes on to win this season, I think there's a chance Bailey is one by the end. Um, at that point it would be like, it would be a fight between Bailey and Anthony, depending on how like Anthony, like at the end of his game would end up playing out. Um, yeah, we'll have to do this one. But, yeah, I think if V goes home this week, I think uh, Bailey is above Victoria. Well, I should say, if, if, yeah, I don't think necessarily, because if, if Bailey goes out of four, then not really. But, like, if Bailey gets to the end, uh, or even gets to three uh, in a spot where, like, she more likely just beats everybody, um, I think Bailey would probably be above Victoria. Because, again, I think the issue for me of Victoria is I just don't think Victoria's actually been playing that well. <laughs> It's like she's been in a dominant position the entire game, but I don't think she's made like the correct decision at like almost any point in the game. Um, yeah, yeah, I think you credit that somewhat to Bailey. Like, I think Bailey did work in convincing Victoria of these things to do, but again, it, like she was convinced because, like, it's not like. It's like it, it's not because Bailey tricked her though, right? It's because Bailey genuinely believed that, that was what they should be doing. Um, yeah, that was an instance. Like, yeah, that I think that's the instance where like Bailey's game just goes off the rails. It's like the Donna vote. Like that's one where like yeah, she just had no real agency in any of that, and obviously didn't want that to happen and didn't stop it from happening. Uh, what do I want to hear? This hunted, right? It's hunted infected, so fuck it. Watch me fucking die from my own bomb again. But, well, we'll try it out again. <laughs> and I'll fucking regret it. Um... 
ranking the baddies. Uh, maybe after this encounter. Fuck off! Did I kill him? How the fuck did I not kill him? Whatever. I, I guess I won't use that one. Oh, fuck off. Oh, I forgot. That doesn't work, does it? Oh, I can do... Lucky. Uh, Anthony's optimal again. Yeah, it's targeting uh, Bailey, but he's not doing that. Or he doesn't seem to. I guess we'll, we'll see how tomorrow plays out. Like obviously we'll get the answers to what's actually going on. But again, there's no like reason to think he's targeting Bailey right now, right? That was lucky. Nah, whatever. That was fine. Uh, Billy was never the one actually causing the game to shift in her favor. She lucked out in the better position. I, I wouldn't necessarily agree at points. Like, I think there's like... Like, I think, like, this last round, I think getting Victoria to nominate Lexus, I think that's something I would give Bailey credit for. Uh, that does benefit for her. Not risking Todd going home there. Um, like, I think she saved herself during the executive veto week, or round, whatever that was, where, like, she convinces uh, Victoria to, to give the power to Todd instead of Tola. Um, I think that's something you give her credit for. Um, and we kind of thought about this earlier about Ultimus, but yeah, I think Anthony's is t Bailey. I think V's is probably like Todd, right? Um, like maybe Lexus, but probably Todd. Uh, I think Bailey's is at this point probably V's. Uh, or taking out V. Um, wait. Oh, I didn't open this. Yeah, I'm an idiot. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think Bailey at this point probably needs V out. Just because, like, V is the only person that could be here in the game. Um, especially with Anthony having immunity. I think there might be an argument of, like, Anthony, but, like, I think with Anthony having immunity, then, okay, it's definitely V. Uh, Todd, again, like, it depends on, like, if he's trying to win the game, probably, ideally, Anthony. But, like, I guess V is the next best option. If he's trying to, serve, like, get to Final Two, I think getting rid of Lexus is probably uh, his tar his ideal target. Um, um, the rest of this is capture, right? So I want, well, actually, theater's at the end, right? Okay. I think I will buy this. Uh, but yeah, Lexus probably, I think Lexus should target Bailey. Like, I think for Lexus, I think she should want to separate Bailey and Todd right now. Um, move Jonathan up to 205. 
that's something. Um, problem is that V is targeting Lexus, but it doesn't matter though, right? Because like Bailey and Todd are also gonna eventually target Lexus. Like it's like at this point, it's more so about like, like I think with Lexus, I think her plan should be get rid of Bailey now, get rid of v, v at four, get rid of Anthony at three. Like that should be Lexus's plan. Um, because again, the problem is that if she gets rid of V now, then she's coming into the next round, essentially 1v2 in the HOH. Um, which I guess to be fair, like it technically is that also with V, but like I think in this part, like in this situation, it's like Bailey and Todd are like, uh, is separate, is separate, whatever, fuck. Uh, like unseparated, uh, it can't be separated. <laughs> fuck me, dude. Um, like I, I think they're in this part where like, Okay, I think Victoria is much more likely to turn against like Bailey or Todd than Bailey or Todd are willing to take uh, each other out. Uh, should I go this way or the other way? I think I'll still go that way. Um... Oh, both Lexus and Anthony are playing poorly. I mean, really... Like, I think you could say everyone is paying poorly at this point, except for Bailey, pretty much. Yeah, I think, yeah, yeah, again, the nomination of Lexus just makes no real sense to me, outside of just maintaining Bailey. But, like, now, does that matter? I, I guess, like, you could argue it does, but it's like, I don't think it's enough to risk Lexus, though. Oh, fuck off. It's fucking mirror mode. Oh, fuck off! Okay. God damn it, he fucking ducked at the last second. Ugh. No. Get back to the fucking thing. Okay, cool. Dude, whatever. Alright, so this is pretty bad at this point. Can someone peek their head out, please? And I can't see it from here. And that's lovely. Fucking damn it, dude. Whatever. Alright. Well, great. Alright, this is really bad. Oh my fucking god! Okay. Oh my- Okay, I knew that was gonna miss, too. Alright, this is just ridiculous. Okay. I think I'm dead. I have no ammo. How do I have... Okay. Well, you know what? Fuck it. Like, this is quite possibly, like, the worst encounter I've ever done in my entire fucking life. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. That's so stupid. Um... Yeah, I know Bailey and Anthony are talking about Fonzie. They sh shouldn't, though. Like, that's... Like, even, it, like, I think for both of them, it's not in their best interest. Like, for Anthony, obviously, again, we know from outside the game that he loses against Bailey, and that's bad. Um, but then even for Bailey, like, why are you taking Anthony when you could take Todd? <laughs> like, why? Or even Lexus. Like, it's, it, like, it's dumb for it to even be considering this either. Um...
Uh, but yeah, I, I think at this point, like no matter what, Anthony needs to at least win final three HOH. And I think he's also a spot where like he's coming to final four round in a pretty precarious spot. Uh, what did I get yesterday? 149, that's pretty decent. All right, so that run was shit. Um, I I think I'll I'll think I'll finish ranking the uh, the baddies and then probably call it a night. Um, what we got here? So Alexis, I don't know. Is Alexis better? I think I'll, I'll put Alexis better than uh, than Natalie. Probably still. Actually, I don't know. Better or worse than Amy? I think that's a debate. I think on my ranking of every player, I think Amy will be higher. So I think I'll go Amy. Uh, Michelle Chase is at the bottom. Corinne. I think Corinne is better than Eliza, maybe? I don't know. I think Eliza is better strategically. No, I, I think I'll put Eliza higher. I think Corinne... I would have just so much less faith in Corinne's strategic ability. Where, like, I feel like physically they're about the same. I feel like strategic, or socially, um, Corinne's probably, like, slightly better, but still pisses off a lot of people. Um, so I'm like, eh. I, I think I'll put, probably put Eliza slightly higher. Aaron Lobdale, I think, is interesting. I think I, I would put her above or below Natalie. I think below Natalie Bolton. But yeah, above Dara, I think. Um, and Stephanie Valencia. I mean, oh wait, no, oh, wait, I missed Sydney Wheeler. Okay, Sydney Wheeler. Um, pff, where's Sydney Wheeler in this? I've never once thought about where's Sydney Wheeler as a player. Um, I guess like better than Sarah Jones. I guess that's it. Um, is the champs versus pros? Um, who the fuck is Louis Vito? Oh, what a shit season this would be. <laughs> Fucking pros win at the end. Like, imagine watching a Survivor season with, like, half of, like, the biggest legends in Survivor history, and then just none of them win. It's just, like, a fucking group of random celebrities that win. Uh, Bailey and Todd wins, Vito doesn't mean they have full control. Um... Pretty, I'm like, pretty much, right? But they would anyway, right? Well, I guess not necessarily, because I guess like if V wins veto, they wouldn't. But in like pretty much every other situation, actually, no, I guess not if, if Lexus wins veto too. Yeah, okay, yeah. I mean, yeah, I guess if they win veto, but like really, it's like, yeah, if Lexus or Anthony win veto, then they have control. If Bailey and Todd win veto, then they have control. V wins veto, then still Anthony has control. Unless she uses the veto, but then why would she be? She'll be putting Bailey on the block. Um, yeah, so it's like, yeah, I guess that is a situation where they would have more control. Um, all right, so yeah, next up, Carolina Eastwood is at. Uh, better or worse than Michelle Chase? I would say better, right? I think that that's where I put her on the worst players of all time ranking. Um, and Stephanie Valencia. Better or worse than Sarah Jones? I would say better, maybe. Nah, actually no. Sarah Jones at least was in a majority alliance. Actually got things done. Um... But stuff events is higher in my heart, I guess. <laughs> um, Elise Uemoto, what a what a survivor player. <laughs> um, better or worse than Sarah Jones? I would say worse. I think played a better game than Stephanie Valencia. For whatever that's worth. So, yeah. Uh, Michaela Wingle. 
Uh, I would probably put... Actually, no. Better or worse than Elise? Or like Elise was in a majority alliance at a point. Michaela never was. But Michaela also had the weird brain enhanced situation. Um, I, I talk about a lot about Survivor 50 before. Like, I, I just think it's going to be a generic returning season to me. Um, I think it's going to be, like, no theme. Uh, a lot of New Era, obviously, but not predominantly. Um, but... Yeah, I mean, like, it, I, I've been talking about it for, like, years. It's pretty much, like, exactly, like, what I said it's going to be for, like, years now. Um, I wonder if we try to save her. Yeah, that that is true. That's definitely a factor. Yeah, I guess that... Yeah, I'll put it at the top of the pre-mergers. Is this still pinned, by the way? Or did it get unpinned because I changed... Yeah, I forgot. It did get unpinned, didn't it? Because I changed stream. So I'll try to pin it again. The players that I'm ranking right now. Uh, we're a 4 4 4 vote. Oh, that's okay. uh, I don't think Omer is there. I don't think Ricard's probably there either. Jonathan and Jesse are probably there. Um, like, I think Jonathan's one of the bigger locks on the board. I think Jesse is very, very likely. I wouldn't say, like, an absolute lock, but I would say very, very likely. Omer, I don't think makes the cut. Um, I think Omer, even by now, I don't think makes the cut. I think when we're adding in three more seasons... Uh, I think definitely doesn't make the cut, especially when, again, like, CBS clearly took Dre aside over Omer's. Um, I think if one of the two are on, like, I don't think they're going to put both of them on. I think if one of the two are on, they're going to pick Drea. Um, Ricard, I just think it's going to be forgotten about. Like, I, I don't think Ricard's that high on their priority list. It never really was. I, I don't think Ricard was ever that that likely um, after his season. Like, obviously, he was talking, talked about a lot at 41. I don't think he's really been talked about at all since then um i think q is coming back I, I think q is very likely to come back um i don't think q is as big of a lock as some people are saying but i think q is very likely to be on um like i think there are bigger locks in the new era than q but i think q is probably within my top 10 um I said that I thought there was a chance Q would decline. I think the fact that like Q is like very much like an online presence right now, and like I don't know, I, I think like the way that I see him reacting to things, I think this is someone that probably wants to play again. Um, forty six next boot. Uh, what Tiffany or Q? Probably. I think they probably target Tiffany. Then does she play her idol or not? If she plays her idol, Q goes home. If she doesn't, then yeah, she goes home. Obviously, uh, again, there could be winners. There also couldn't be. I, I no. <laughs> uh, I think again. I think it, more than likely, yeah, they'll probably be winner. I think it'll probably be like Jam Jam, Marianne, and and D. Lena Rail. I don't think it's part of his strategy to quit. I think. Well, I, I think there are points where it is. I don't think this last time is. Um. And to like he openly says it's not when he did admit like the like in the past that it was to where like this time where he's saying yeah it wasn't strategy I think it's very clearly yeah this point was not strategy um I, I think Q is just someone that has a massive fucking ego and thinks the entire like w weight of the world is on his shoulders and feels like when he fails that like, he has to be the one to take the the blame and everything um. Does so someone say they thought 49 would be returnees? It probably won't be. Yeah, 50 will be returnees. I think I saw someone online say that, like, hoping that 49 will be, like, uh, like 49 will be new era, second chance, and then 50 will be, like, the actual returning season. That's not fucking happening. <laughs> um, 
Hunter and Tavern are your winner picks. I mean, uh, yeah. I mean, yeah. It's funny how like the plus one alliance just completely crumbled. Um, yeah, it's like Q just like really like it's funny how like Q made that alliance to just instantly break it. Um, I think Tevin is likely. I think the thing harming him is like the fact that he uh, obviously like only made it like halfway through the season. But I think it's very clear that Jeff loves Tevin based on, on Fire Podcast and everything to where I do think Tevin is still very probable right now. And the issue is that we still have three more seasons. Um, and like, to be fair, like 49, there's not going to be many spots. Like at most two spots for 49. Um, but still, I think 47, 48 are going to happen. Um... Like, I think there could definitely be people that overshadow Tevin by then. But I think Tevin, as of right now, I would say is is kind of likely. Uh, I think Caleb is very likely. I wouldn't say lock, just because, again, like, it's it's another situation where, like, he was booed halfway through. Like, we still have, like, a few more seasons. Like, if this was, like, Survivor 48, uh, I would say Caleb is a lock. Um, but, again, he was on Survivor 45. Like, that that's a little bit of a gap there to where I'm like, I wouldn't say lock, but I would still say very likely. Um, Primers, would I like to see? Um, ah, because I also that's the difference to like who I think we'll see. Because who I think we'll see is like at best Sabaya. I don't know if anyone else. Uh, what I would like to see, like again, like Zach would be cool. Uh, Maddie, uh, I think would also be interesting. Um, who else? Jelinski would be funny. I don't know if I need to see Jelinski. Claire, like, I like Claire. I don't know if I need to see her play again. Um, Like, while I think there definitely is a lot of potential there, I'm also like, you know, she didn't play the game the most interesting way the first time. So I'm like, she probably, like, I think I would rather have Maddie. I think Maddie is someone that will play a lot more, like, bombastically. Or at least that'll be fun. Uh, Matthew, Ma yeah, Matthew maybe. I think Matthew would definitely be up there. Uh, to be, I, I would like to see, like, I think Brad would be fun. Um, I think there's definitely a world, though, where he comes back and he's Troy Zan. Where, like, he comes back and he's just, like, a much duller version of his original time. Um, but, again, he was fun the first time, at least. Um, I, I think, like, practically, I think Q, yes, can be a GOAT, take it to the end, lose. Edit-wise, no. I, I don't think he's getting to the end. Um... Like, they would not edit him this bl like as this blatant of a GOAT um, if he actually were going to be a GOAT and taken to the end. Um, where, like, the only times this has really happened in the past is, like, what, like, Philip? Um, and even then, that was, like, such a, like, different circumstance because there was Boston Rob, and it was this, like, coronation for Boston Rob. Um, where, like, again, with new era editing, like, I just don't think they'll edit one of their finalists like that. Um, I think quote unquote legends will be on 50. Probably, again, we, we talked about this earlier. Probably not. I, 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 like, I, my ideal would be no. I don't want them to. Um, like, I mean, like, in terms of the people you mentioned, like Parvati, Kelly Wentworth, no chance. Both of them don't want to come back. Um, when we're, but if we're talking about like Boston Rob, if we're talking about like Sandra, um, like, there's tech, like Sari, I think is probably the most likely of them. But like, there's definitely a chance of them. Do I want it? No. Um, I, I like to for Sari. I'll be like fine with, even though like, I still think we should primarily focus on uh, the people that haven't really had a chance to come back yet. Um, but I would be fine if Sari was there. I'll be fine if like Malcolm was there. But I'll still need them though. Um, I don't think that's a funny idea. I think that's a fucking boring idea of uh, doing a draft of the BBAU players I barely remember at this point. Uh, Amanda Kimmel's not back now. I don't think Amanda Kimmel's really on their radar. Even if Amanda wanted to come back, which I don't know if she does, I don't think production's looking at her. Um, that could be something. I mean, like, you're talking about, like... Um, Sort of like coaches, I guess, which would be weird to have on returning seasons, but 
Um, or like it'll be like IOI, <laughs> which would be also weird. Um, okay, let's try to finish this. How many more people are there? All right, Michaela, again, it's at the top of that. Christina Chaw. Christina Chaw is pretty bad. Oh my god, oh wait, there's way more names than I thought there were. What the fuck? Um, yeah, Christina Chaw is really bad. I don't know where to rank her in this. Like, better than Michaela or worse? Like, is she, like, better than this, like, pre-merge contingent? Just because she made Final Four? I don't know. I'll, I'll say so. Why not? Uh, Abby Maria? Uh, that's also really fucked. Uh, okay, this is gonna be a pain to organize at this point. I did not realize there's this many fucking people. Uh, all right, let's do it that way. Abby Maria, I would say, actually, wait, let's break it up this way. Uh, better or worse than Christina Cha? I would say worse. Uh, better or worse than Michaela? Pfft, don't know. Yeah, again, I think I'll, I think Emily's a lock if she wants it. Uh, I think Austin is likely as of now. I think Drew is likely as of now. Um, I think the issue for Drew is that they cast so many of like his sort of archetype that like, okay, even though I don't think they care about archetypes anymore, I just feel like he could be a bit washed out by the time it happens. Um, I'm not doing an all men, all women, all star season. Uh, I think that's yeah. I think people wouldn't like that. Um, let's see. Morgan, McLeod. Better or worse than Sarah Jones? Uh, I would say... I think there's more game ability, at least. I'll say better. Uh, Sydney Wheeler or Alexis Jones? Or Lexus just Lexus Maxwell. Fuck me. Uh, I'd say better, but worse than Michaela, maybe. Um, probably new or wait, probably the biggest villain we've seen in the new era. Who we're talking about? We're talking about Q. Um, <laughs> what's this picture of Charlie? <laughs> Uh, there's too many white people that people, production wants to seem not cast true. I would agree with that. Because again, yeah, just talking about like who's a lock, I feel like a lot of the locks are are uh, white. A lot of the men. It's <laughs> uh, where it's like, yeah, I, I could definitely see Drew not making the cut due to that as well. Um, oh, Drew, we're talking about Drew as the villain. Um, eh, kinda, yeah. Uh, Joshua Swin, I don't know. I, I just have too much other stuff going on. I'll try to watch it by the end of the year, though. Um, like, is Sir Bruce a returning player? I would. Um, yeah, like, I would have Bruce on there as a returning game. Uh, I don't really care about how they pick the winner of Josh Muslin. Uh, I think they would bring like I think they'd be willing to bring Bruce back. I don't think he makes the cut, but again, like Jeff openly says on fire that he would love to have Bruce back. Um, and that, like that was like part of his explanation of like who's a villain and who isn't. Like th like Bruce is like the type of villain we would love to see back. Russell Hans isn't. It's like he he like openly says that yeah we would have Bruce back. I just don't think Bruce is like making the cut, but I think they would at least consider Bruce. Um. Alright, so Kim. So Kim better or worse than Nicole Delma. Uh I would say better, I guess. Uh Purple Jacket. Uh my favorite player, Purple Jacket. Um where's Purple Jacket? I I think better than Jenna Maraska. Better or worse than Amanda. I think that's tough. She did win. She did get to the end twice. I, I would... S both of games are worse than both of Amanda's end games, though. 
I'd say worse. I think I'll go worse. I think it's tough, though. Michelle Fitzgerald, I think, is like one of the toughest players to rank. Uh, Stephanie Johnson. Uh, I would say, I don't know, better or worse than Alexis Maxwell. I would say better, maybe? Yeah, I'd say better. Um, Jeff from World's Part. I mean, like, I don't think they like that Jen quit. So I think that's the main reason. Um, yeah, Russell Hans is never playing again. Like, Jeff openly says that he would never cast Russell Hans, like, modern survivor. Um, what have ever seen it end in a tie? I mean, like, I don't know. I guess I could do that, but, like, I don't know, I don't know how interesting that really is. Uh, no, I'm just going to stay. I think, like, I would guess, if if I were to guess when Jeff retires, I think 60 is probably when I'll say Jeff will retire. I don't think he's retiring anytime soon. Like, I don't think he has any, like, he doesn't have anything going on outside Survivor. Um, or Angelina. Angelina. I would say better than Dara. Better or worse than Aaron Lobdell. I think I will go worse. I think. Uh, did Jeff cast in the first time around? Was he involved in the casting process? We're talking about Russell Hans? No. Um, like he was in the sense that he was there. Like he's he was the executive producer by that point. So like he was there when like they like did the finals interviews and stuff. But like he's not like he didn't have his hand in it as much as he does now though. Um, it's so, like was he there when like Russell Hans had his final interview? Yeah. Um, like he talked to Russell Hans. Yeah. But like was he like pretty much like the main decider like deciding factor on if they make the show or not no um uh yeah hopefully you got survivor that'll be cool uh someone from chat made it on um what times rose out of three instead of two i think uh ferris still wins i think mark gets votes but like i think ferris wins uh natalia where's natalia uh, probably below Alexis. Um, they play for 49. Why? <laughs> um, that sounds miserable to be on 49 and then like be asked to be on 50 and then be on 50, like play both back to back. Uh, I feel like that'd be miserable. Uh, Victoria Baymond Day. Yeah, I'm sure a lot of people would do it, but it's like, I don't know. I wouldn't want to do it. <laughs> um, all right, Victoria, uh, Victoria Baymond Day is obviously the best player ever, so. But like, actually, I mean, like, I would say better than Alexis Jones. I don't know, like, Amy... I think I would have more faith in Victoria than Amy, but I, I, I even don't know that. To be fair, I think my opinion of Victoria went down on the rewatch, so maybe, maybe I'll just put Victoria there. Uh, Aurora? Ugh. Um, where do I rank Aurora? Uh, better or worse than Christina Cha? I guess better. Better or worse than Alicia? Eh, yeah, no. I, I think Alicia's... Actually, I don't know. Yeah, I'll put her above Alicia. I think below Corinne. I don't mind Aurora as a character. I don't think she's a particularly good player, though. Um, Lauren Beck, I think, is above Amy, above Stephanie Grossa, above Danny Del Lorenzo, above Jerry, above Jenna. I think below Michelle Fitzgerald. Uh, well, with Dean for IOI, no chance. Like, 0% chance. I think IOI, I think best you're going to get is Elaine, 
or uh, or Lauren at this point. Maybe slight chance of Janet, but I I just don't think they'll cast anybody. I think they'll try to avoid talking about the season ever again uh, at this point, which is like. And, like, to be fair, I don't think that's why they wouldn't cast, like, Elaine in them. But, like, I, I think that would be more so just because, like, like it's just been a decent amount of time. And I don't think any of them have really stood the test of time. Where I think, like, now, like, looking at, like, looking back at, like, those sort of seasons from back then, people still talk about Christian. People still talk about Rick Devins. People still talk about Dominic. No one is talking about Elaine. Um, again, 0% chance Kelly Kim plays again, I think. Where, like, even if she wanted to play again, which she doesn't, I don't think production would... I think that's a situation where they would not cast her again because they would not want to bring up the situation again. Um, well, yeah, I think for like Elaine and like Lauren, I think it has to just do with longevity and like how long it's been. But with Kelly, I think it's outright. Yeah. They just don't want to bring it up again. Um, what a 45. I mean, it's probably just Austin D final two, right? Yeah, I would love to see Dominic back. Uh, I I worry for him in terms of making the cut at this point. But I, I would like to see him back. Uh, Sydney Siegel. Um, I'll say worse than Michaela. I would say around where Natalia is. I'll say below Natalia, because at least Natalia survived the round. But I guess Signe get, get kind of screwed in her going out when she did. So maybe I'll swap that. Um, I would love if Ron Clark played again. I just don't think it's happening. Um, what, 44 at a final two? Are we saying Heidi wins final immunity? Um, because I actually don't know what she does. She might take Cham Cham, for all I know. Uh, I actually generally don't know. I know she had a closer relationship with Jam Jam at least. Um, Claire, um, I think is below Stephanie Valencia. Yeah. Um, actually, now I think about it, should Stephanie Valencia be higher? Because at least Stephanie Valencia, like was the last of her group to be voted out. She still got David Murphy on her side by the end. I think there's at least better stuff there. Eh, no, actually, no. Against, against Elise, I don't think it's enough. Uh, but Maddie, um... Uh, Maddie above or below Elise? Maybe even above Sarah Jones. Um... Marianne, I'm conflicted on if she would play again. Where I genuinely don't know. I think there's signs to her saying yes. I think there's also signs to her saying no. Um, yeah, then D, I would put below Parvati above Michelle. Or above, above, wait, below Parvati above Amanda. All right. So there we go. That's the ranking. What, Parvati, D, Amanda, Michelle, Lauren, Jenna. Okay, this is too many names. I'm not going to fucking read out everybody, but either way, that, that's the ranking. Uh, if you can see the spreadsheet. Um, but yeah, like D, I think will be back, though, if she wants it. Well, actually, I think she'll be back if the theme permits and if Jeff still cares about her. <laughs> uh, which I, I think is likely right now. And again, the casting's only in a year, so it's like, it, it's pretty probable. Um, Kind of shot twenty minutes ago. Theory that that is pretty mind blowing. Uh, purple jacket. I mean, she's she's below Amanda. Uh, if Joe is a controversial, any chance he come back? Probably. <laughs> I think it'll probably be very likely if he wanted it, which I don't know if he does. But if he did, yeah. Um, I do think at this point they'll probably try to avoid him, right? I think it's enough to the point where, like, they will. Yeah, I think Ozzy is uh, one of the tougher players to rank. Uh, UK, I mean, if Chris won final immunity, I don't know who he takes. Because, like, I think there is a lot of him that wants to be loyal to Matthew, but I think he also, he also did talk a lot about, like, 
uh, if Matthew's on the jury, then he's a vote for me. So, like, I don't know. I think I would lean towards him still taking Matthew and then losing. But um, if he takes, like, Lonnie, then it's a close vote. Is that something? <laughs> um, only one locked first, and it's Killa Carla. Sure. Again, Carla is very likely. Like, I think it's very clear production loves Carla, so. Yeah, again, very likely. Yeah, I think Christopher is going to be a forgotten about character, which is a shame. But, uh, again, like, I think just in general, UK is probably going to be forgotten about. Um, who even won, I don't even remember who won Final Immunity in UK, in UK. Or UK, Quebec. He's like what Chris, uh, Christoph and Kimberly take each other. I don't even know who Nicholas takes. Like, could not even tell you. Nicholas won. Yeah, could not tell you then. Uh, yeah, don't even know who he takes. I don't know who he had a closer relationship to. It's like he didn't have much of a relationship to them, right? Until like he came back. Um. I mean, I guess like Kareen votes for Kimberly. So does that imply? I don't even know what that really implies. I don't know. Anyway, takes Kim, beats both of them. Yeah, I mean that's probably the case anyway. But uh, wait, my colleague never come back. I think he just got pretty unlucky because I think when it came to game changers, I think they thought JT was like a bigger name than Mike. So I think they brought JT back there. And then when we got to Winners at War, they had Ben, who I think they looked at as a similar archetype. Uh, I just think he got super unlucky with timing. Um, and obviously, like, if he had been eligible for Cambodia, he would have been easily on that cast, but obviously wasn't. So, yeah, I, I just think he got unlucky. Matt and Kirsten might be dating. We're talking about from BB25. <laughs> Thank God. Um, right, we're going to end here. Again, it's fucking four, past four o'clock. I really did not want to end stream this late again, but oh fucking well, I guess. Um... So, yeah, again, we'll be back uh, on Wednesday at the Survivor. Uh, by then, I should be pretty deep into my Amazing Race review. If not caught up, we'll see. Um, Rodney's not returning. Um, even at the time, I don't think he would have returned. Like, even, like, immediately after. I mean, like, he could have been on, like, Cambodia if they wanted him to, but they didn't. Uh, but like now, especially no, no, no way at all. Uh, do I think AU would rig it for AU and AU versus US probably, or at least try to favor them? I don't think they would outwardly rig it, but I think they definitely would do things that might benefit them. Um, beyond the point where I quit tactic, yeah, I sort of mentioned that before. That's like you quit at the boss, that first boss, um, which I, I, it definitely was like. I, I did not love the, like, having to get her under the chandelier thing. I thought that was really stupid. But outside of that, it was, like, kind of a whatever boss. Um, James, which James are talking about? James Clement. Um, would he say yes? Probably. Would they want him? Probably not at this point. Um, Hunter Alice. I mean, it would be funny, but probably not happening. Um, you'd be able to just got annoyed afterwards. Stop playing. Okay. I'm still personally enjoying it. I just don't have time to play it. But, yeah, again, all right, we'll be back on Wednesday. Again, there'll be a lot to talk about. Deal or no deal, Island is happening. Uh, as far as Maryland is happening, uh, Circle, last, or not last episodes, but the last episodes before the finale, uh, All Stars 4, BB Can, Amazing Race, Survivor, all that stuff. But, yep, till then, see you guys next time.